The Anopheles mosquito, which thrives in tropical areas, is merely a means of transport, the vector that spreads malaria. The real culprit is the plasmodium, the parasite that the mosquito transmits. The female Anopheles bites at night to feed on human blood, and if its victim is already infected, the mosquito sucks in not only blood, but also numerous parasites. Once in the mosquito's gut, the parasites multiply, divide, and then move to the salivary glands. And when it bites again, the parasites invade the next victim's blood. The plasmodium undergoes multiple changes in the human body, from sporozoite to trophozoite to schizont to merozoite and lastly gametocyte. These metamorphoses enable it to circumvent the barriers of its host's immune system. The parasite's first stop on its journey through the bloodstream is the liver. At this stage, there is no immune response, and the parasite is free to infect the liver cells and multiply, until the point at which the liver cells rupture, releasing vast quantities of parasites into the blood and provoking the first symptom, shivering. The parasites then infect the red blood cells and quickly multiply, causing them to burst. A new generation of plasmodium contaminate the blood, and it's their turn to be sucked in by a mosquito. The cycle has come full circle. The rupture of red blood cells results in fever spikes lasting several hours, which are characteristic of malaria. Shivering, fever, and sweating follow in cycles. The bouts of fever occur every two to three days. In the case of Plasmodium falciparum, malaria can reach other organs, such as the brain, and become severe or even fatal. People who contract the disease several times acquire a partial immunity. Young children with developing immune systems and pregnant women whose immune systems alter during pregnancy are most at risk of severe and sometimes fatal malaria.